thank everyone for joining. And today we are very glad uh, Fu Yuan will give us a talk on non aggressive text generation, uh, sorry, uh, artifact summarization with length control algorithms. So Fu Yuan is a master's student at the University of Nevada uh, working with me on summarization tasks. He proposed several length control algorithms. Uh, one is published as ACL, the top tier NLP value, and the other is still in submission. And uh, before that, he has uh, um, he has the bachelor's degree in our department as well. So without further ado, can you can get started. Thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, my name is Pu Yan, and uh, I'm going to present my thesis, non-autoregressive and surprise summarization with lens control algorithms. And this is all of my presentation. I will first show my approach, and then I will present some uh, experimental results on benchmark data sets. So the task we consider is text summarization. Now, what is summarization? Summarization is the process of generating a short summary for a long given input source text. Uh, for example, an article or some long paragraph. And you can think summarization has many applications and such as headline generation for news articles. Um, imagine you have a bunch of long news articles comprising of very long sentences. Um, you want to learn about what's happening in these news articles, but you don't want to spend tons of time reading each of them in detail. So one way you can do is employing a summarization system to generate summaries or abstracts for these news articles. And then instead of reading these long articles, you can just read the summaries uh, to learn about the news. Um, summarization models can also be used to see uh, when you're writing a research paper and you are too lazy to write an abstract for it, well, then you can employ a summarization model to generate an abstract for you. And depending on the type of inputs, uh, we can categorize summarization models into single document and multi-document and sentence level. In this presentation, we specifically focus on the sentence level summarization. And that is you generate summaries for uh, input sentence. Um, at the bottom of the slides, I'm giving an example for this sentence level summarization where the first part you have a long sentence and the, the second part you have a, a short summary for this long given input soft sentence. And currently there are many summarization models developed in the recent decade. And the state of the art summarization systems are mainly surprised. Um, they can generate summaries of good, uh, high quality but one requirement of these models is large label training corpora. So label data here means is um, you have a pair of uh, soft tags and its corresponding summary. So even though they have very good performance, uh, you cannot apply those, those models to less popular areas, uh, such as less spoken languages or some emerging areas because you don't have enough label data in these areas. And therefore you can lawfully train your supervised model in those settings. And as a result, to solve this issue, people started to think about unsurprised summarization. So unsurprised summarization basically doesn't require any paired sample. Um, and uh, therefore it can apply to the aforementioned areas. So a state of the art and surprise summary, uh, previously um, a search based matter achieved a state of the art performance in this enterprise setting. And this matter first defined a scoring function to evaluate the quality of the predicted summary. Uh, this function is being defined heuristically because we don't have any ground truth summaries after training signal. And this heuristically defined scoring function has two components. And first one is the sum is the fluency of the predict summary because you want the predict summary to be fluent and can be easily read. And this fluency is measured mainly based on the popularity of the summary. 
as you can see in this equation, uh, is mainly measured by uh, a language model. And here is a bidirectional long short term memory serving as a language model. The other component of the scoring function is for the semantic similarity between the source text and your predict summary because you want your predict summary to preserving the main information from the source text. So you're expecting them to be semantically similar. And this is measured based on the cosine similarity between the embeddings of the source sentence and the corresponding summary. So the scoring function uh, consider both of the fluency and the semantic similarity. And this matter, uh, perform a search to find a summary that can maximize this heuristically defined scoring function. So basically they are trying to uh, if, extract some tokens from the source sentence. Say I'm extracting 10 words from the source text as the summary. And they are trying to find an extraction that can maximize this heuristically defined score. Even though this matter, as I mentioned, they have state-of-the-art and surprise performance, one major drawback is the slow inference because it's a search-based matter and it requires hundreds of local search to generate summaries for every single sample. And this process can be super slow. In theoretically, it can take 10 to 15 minutes, sorry, 10 to 15 seconds to generate summaries for a single sample. And our idea is, why don't we learn a machine learning model from the search results? And that is, you use the search results from the previous mentioned search-based method as the training target of a machine learning model. So we first employ the search-based method uh, to perform inference on the training and validation data set to get some unsurprisingly generated summaries. And then we train a machine learning model by using these summaries as the training target. But why, why does it help? Uh, this is because after you learn a machine learning model, you can just use the model to perform inference to generate summaries. And it can be hundreds of times faster than the search-based method at the inference time. And moreover, we found that this learning process can smooth out the search noise. And our machine learning model can even be able to generate better summaries with higher root scores. So root scores is a mean evaluation metric for summarization systems. And we choose to use a non-autoregressive architecture for the non-autoregressive model. And this is because non-autoregressive model can predict all tokens in parallel. And this can make the inference efficiency even better because this parallel generation can utilize the parallel processing of modern hardware. Uh, such as GPU and CPU. And moreover, because the model outputs at the different slots are predicted simultaneously, this predicted probability at different slots are essentially local and independent from each other. And this enables us to design a dynamic programming algorithm to control the summary loss explicitly. So you can think about this then the programming as we consider how many words we have generated in the summary and how many remaining loss budget do we have. And then we, uh, if we can design a dynamic programming algorithm to solve this. So I, I will, this is a high level I, uh, overview of the approach. I will introduce the detail of this loss control algorithm and our learning from search in the later slides. I will present the details of our approach by dividing it into three components. And the first one is unsurprised search. And the second one is non progress generation. And then we have advanced control algorithms. As I mentioned before, we first follow the unsurprised search-based method. So Schumann's method is the uh, search-based method I mentioned before, which defines the scoring function heuristically. So we follow layer matter and first randomly select several tokens from the soft sentence after summary. So we'll say let's select 10 tokens randomly from the soft tags. And then in every search in every search iteration, 
we discard one token from the from the predicted summary and include another one into the, from the soft text. So you can think about this as uh, we are replacing the selection and non-selection of two tokens in the soft text. So by iteratively doing this, we can find a summary that can maximize the heuristically defined scoring function. And then we're returning this um, summary that can maximize the score. And we employ this search-based method to perform inference on the training and the validation data set. So we can get some uh, search-based summaries and these summaries can be later used as the training targets for our machine learning model. Right, as I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, we use the search results as the training target. And notice this process, this learning process is completely unsurprised. And that's because our machine learning model is learning from the output summaries of an unsurprised search-based method. And this process doesn't involve any ground truth summaries and therefore is unsurprised. I just want to emphasize because People may be confused why is your machine learning model and surprise, although you are learning from some targets. And we choose the, uh, our not regressive model is essentially an encoder only transformer. And we choose this encoder only architecture because we believe such an architecture can utilize the, the correspondence between certain targets in the further summarization task. So in the experimental part, uh, I will compare this, our encoder-only architecture with the encoder-decoder architecture. And to confirm that our encoder-only model can indeed perform better than encoder-decoder architectures. So this is the zooming wheel of our architecture. Uh, as you can see, we feed in a soft sentence, uh, high productivity does blah, 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 the auto industry. And then the model can predict the probability at different slots simultaneously. You may also notice that um, for such a model, the model outputs have the same lines as the model input. And this can be troublesome because if you fit a soft text into such a model, it's gonna generate the text of the same lines as the soft text. But summarization, in summarization, we're requiring the predicted text to be shorter than the soft text, because otherwise you cannot get a summary. And to handle this issue, we actually train the model with the connection is temporal classification, CDC algorithm. CDC algorithm is able to learn to insert blank epsilon tokens into the model output. And then we can get a shorter summary, uh, shorter output after, after summary, after removing this epsilon. You may be wondering why are we first adding some epsilon and then we remove epsilon. The process seems meaningless. So let me show an example here. So in this example, we can have the model output to have I epsilon like reading epsilon triple for epsilon books. So even this model output can have the same lines as the model input. We can still get a shorter summary after removing these epsilons. In other words, we are, after, we are asking the model to scattering some epsilon in the model output, uh, such that removing this epsilon can bring us the true summary, the ground, uh, or the summary we want. And the training target, sorry, the training objective of CDC is a summation over the probability uh, of the model output W such that uh, this model output W can be converted into the training target uh, after removing all the epsilon. You can think about this gamma function as a function that removes all epsilons uh, in the W. And this is summation over the probability of uh, all the model outputs that can be converted to the training target after removing epsilons through this gamma function. 
So this summation seems to be uh, infeasible to calculate it manually because um, it's, there's a too many uh, W to be considered. But actually, this training target, sorry, this training objective can be computed by the program. So I will not cover the details for this objective calculation in this presentation. So if you are interested in the detailed calculation of it, you can check out our original paper of CTC. Um, I will just move forward. Okay, now we reach the loss control algorithms part. So the first question people may ask is, uh, what is loss control and why, why do we even need loss control? So loss control basically means is we want to control the upper summary loss uh, of a summarization model. And but why, why do we need loss control? And this is because the real world application, when you, when you are trying to deploy text generation models to real world applications, you really have to consider loss budget because your really real world applications has some loss budget. So for example, fitting the screen wise. And imagine you have a LED display panel seeing the airport and you have some tags. So for example, some flight information to display on that panel. You want your tags to fit in the screen wise of the panel because otherwise you have to keep scrolling the information because you have multiple eyes and then you have to keep scrolling the information. And this can make a reading difficult. Or like consider another scenario when you have a list of um, top news or say headline of news for today, you, you definitely want every single headline to fit in say one, uh, both the screen wise and the one row of the of your cell phone screen. And then you have a list of the top 10 headline news. So in that case, also have to consider the lens of the uh, generation. So not only for summarization, for other text generation models, you may also suffer from the um, real world loss budget. And the other main important reason why we need loss control is, um, is crucial for fair comparison between different summarization models because the mean evaluation metric for a summarization system, uh, say the root scores, are very sensitive to the summary loss. You can easily achieve a higher score by generating longer summaries. So then it's not fair to compare, compare different models when their summary loss is not controlled. But then how, how do we control the summary loss? So several, one naive idea is basically we truncate the over-length generation. See, if the desired summary loss is 10 words, or say the loss budget is 10 words, and the model is generating 15 words, then we can remove or deleting the last five words, and then we can get a summary fitting on the last budget, and everyone's happy. No, it's actually not that simple because if you truncate a summary, then you're definitely missing some information and the summary becomes incomplete. And another approach people usually do is we feed in loss information together with the model input. See, we have a soft tax and uh, we not only feed in soft tax, but we also feed in the desired summary loss in 10 words during the training process. And then we ask the model to automatically learn to generate a summary of the desired lens uh, through the training by some tricks. But one, one reason, but one drawback for, of such matter is they usually cannot explicitly control the summary lens. Um, when you actually perform the inference, if your desired lens is 10, you could generate nine words, or you can also generate 11 words or 12 words. Then you, you still have to perform truncating and the summary is again become incomplete. Well, in our approach, we're, we're presenting a loss control algorithm that can explicitly control the summary lines without hurting um, the completeness of the summary. And our loss control algorithm operates on the opus of our non-progressive model. 
And notice it's an inference type algorithm. So it's not involved in the training process. And in total, we consider two kinds of loss control. The first one is word level loss control that can control the number of words in the summary. And the second one is character level loss control, which can control the number of characters in a summary. So I will first introduce the first one, which is the word level one. So our word level loss control is based on demo programming, as I mentioned in the beginning introduction slides. So we have a recursion variable, BST, which is the most probable T word summary given the first set model outputs. You can think about this BST um, as the table cell in a sorry, in the, the S row and T column table cell of a table B. So we have a large dynamic programming table B, and this BST is in the S row and T column. So then you can think about where gradually filling in this table. And after we're reaching the last cell of the table, see the table cell in the right bottom corner, then we can get the most probable summary of the desired loss given all the model outputs. So if we have the number of rows equals to the desired summary loss and number of columns equals to the number of model outputs. And for this algorithm, we have two base cases. The first one is B10. In this case, we have S equals one and T equals zero. That means is we're finding the most probable one word summary, sorry, most probable zero word summary given the first model output. So in that case, we can only have a summary of a single epsilon token because we have a summary loss of zero, but we still have a token in the summary. That means it's, we can only have epsilon token here. And the second base case is B11. In that case, we have X equal one and T equals one. So in this case, our summary loss is one. So we must have a non-epsilon word in the summary because epsilon will be removed later and uh, it doesn't contribute to the real summary loss. And we want the most probable summary um, because BFT is supposed to keep the most probable summary. Sorry, one second. My cat is screaming. Sorry for the interruption. Um, my cat was screaming somehow. Um, right, so I was previously talking about B11. So um, we want the most probable now epsilon word here because uh, the definition of this recursion variable is the most probable summary. And we further have, have three recursion cases. And the first one is when the next word is epsilon. In this case, we have T on the both sides of the equation. And that's because when you include epsilon into the summary, it doesn't contribute to the actual summary loss because the epsilon will be removed later. And that's why we have T on the left, hand, sorry, T on the right hand side and also T on the left hand side. So here we are selecting the, the summary from this um, BS minus one T, which is a, a set of summary of lines T. And this recursion case is shown as the blue transition error in this um, diagram. So this diagram is a, a partial wheel of the dynamic programming table B I mentioned before. Just here, it's more, it's more like a transpose of the table I mentioned before. Um, because here we have the number of rows to be the rows to be the generation slots and columns to be the partial sentence, uh, sentence loss T. And the second case is also uh, when the summary loss doesn't change. As you can see, we also have T on the right-hand side and the left-hand side for this equation. And this is when the next word repeats the prediction at the previous time. So you'll be curious, like why are we still having the summary loss being the same in this case. And this is because one thing I didn't mention about CDC is it also merges repetitive tokens. So if we have a sentence, I triple like reading, then CDC will convert it into I like reading. So if I merge the three like in the middle, 
into one like, and then the sentence become I like reading. So similar to the epsilon case, we also show this case as the blue translation error in this diagram. The third case is different. In this case, we are moving from t minus one to t. And that's because we're generating a non-epsilon and non-reputation token here. So the predicted token will neither be merged or removed so it's contributing to the actual summary loss. And our loss move from t minus one to t being increased by one. We show such a case um, by the right transition error in this diagram. So basically we find the candidate summary for all these three cases. And then we find the most probable one among all of them and keep it as BST. This matches with our previous definition of BST, which is the most probable summary uh, of T words given the first S model outputs. So at the bottom of these slides, I show a complete diagram of these transition cases. Uh, we have non epsilon, non repetition, and Epsilon or reputation here. Yeah, that's basically the main idea of this word level loss control version. But there's also some problem. As I mentioned before, CTC merges repetitive tokens. And you may realize this merging operation can establish a dependency between different dynamic programming steps of our world level loss control algorithm. And this may unfortunately making our loss control algorithm approximate. So in my thesis, uh, I prove a theorem showing that if we don't merge the reputations, then our dynamic programming algorithm, the loss control DP algorithm is exact. But if we are merging the reputations, then the loss control DP is approximate. But that's not the end of the world because we can always do something to alleviate this inexactness. So in my case, I was enhancing DP with a beam search. So instead of keeping the most probable t word summary, given the first test model opus, I'm keeping the top case summaries. So specifically, we change the max operation in these recursion cases by a top key, but by the top key operation. So we're keeping the uh, several top summaries instead of keeping the most probable one. And we also conduct some analysis, empirical analysis, to verify the effectiveness of this beam search component. In this diagram, uh, the y axis is the delta root scores. So it's the change in the total root scores comparing with some baseline matters. And the x uh, axis here is the beam size. So there's a different beam size of our beam search component. As you can see, when we increase the beam size from one to some small values, say six or seven here, the performance of our loss control, which is the orange curve here, is keeping increasing. So this is verifying when we have the beam search and we increase the beam size from one to some small values, the performance of the, the, the quality or the performance of the summary is keep increasing. So this verifies that our beam search component is indeed playing a role in our loss control version. So this verifies that um, this, it, this beam search component is indeed effective. So this is the end of our word level loss control. Now I will move to our character level loss control. So character level loss control can control the number of characters. Does you recall? It can control the number of characters in the summary. Say I want to generate 50 characters and uh, or 60 characters. Well, our word level loss control can control the number of words in the summary. Say I want to generate eight word summaries or 10 word summaries. And similarly to the word level loss control, 
our character level launch control is also based on data programming. But differently, here we're formulating the loss control as a knapsack like problem. So remember, we recall that in knapsack problem, we have a list of items and every single item has a value and a weight. And our goal is trying to find a combination of these items to maximize the summation of the values while, minimum, while, while fitting a specific given budget. See, the total weights must be lower than a specific amount. In, the, in our character level loss control, we're treating the number of characters in a word as the weight and the predicted log probability of a word as the value. And then our goal naturally becomes we want to find a word sequence, say a summary, um, such that the total, the, the weight of the summary is lower than a specific given uh, loss budget. So this weight is calculated as a summation or the weight of all tokens in this predicted summary. So our summary is W1, blah, 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 WS. And we also want to maximize the value or the summary value, which is summation or the value of all tokens in the summary. So this W1 to WS is the, the summer summary. All right, so this is a clear like a why our, why can we formulate loss control as a knapsack like problem. And also similar to the word level loss control, we have a recursion variable, which can be regarded as a, a, a cell in the table, like a, the, the table cell in the astro and else column. So in this case, um, our recursion variable is DSL, which is the most probable summary in the else long sparkit, given the first S model operands. So you may be wondering, what is a long sparkit? Uh, why do we need it? Why do we even need a long sparkit? Why don't we have it for the word level loss control reason? So the alpha long spark it covers the lungs ranging from alpha times L minus one plus one to alpha L. So it's basically a lungs range. For example, if we set alpha to be five, then the lungs range can be zero to five, six to 10 and uh, 11 to 15. So basically, we're finding the most probable summary within every single launch range. So why are we introducing launch range here? This is because in the character level launch control, we're constraining, we're considering summaries of all possible, uh, sorry, of all possible launch in terms of characters. If the desired summary launch is 50 characters, imagine we have a data programming table where the number of rows is the um, different summary allows, then we can easily end up with 50 rows in this time requirement table. And that may not be computationally efficient. In the word level case, we can have the desired allows probably only 10 words or 20 words. Then we have roughly only 20 rows. But here, if the desired loss of characters is 50 or 100, then we can have a very large amount of number of rows. So we introduce this long spark it mainly to reduce the number of rows of this dynamic programming table. Imagine we have alpha to be five and desire summary allowance to be 50. Then we are reducing 50 rows into 10 rows. And we believe this can largely improve inference efficiency. So in the later experimental slides, I will show um, some analysis of this long spark it, showing that it can indeed help an inference efficiency. And similar to the word level loss control, our counter level loss control also has two base keys. And the first one is D10. And that is, uh, we have empty summary of an epsilon token. So this is exactly the same as the word level one. And the second one is D1L. And that is the most probable summary in the Alpha Long Spark Kit. You can think of this, you can think of this as 
the most probable word between long zero and five, six to 10, and 11 to 15, if we are setting alpha to be five. And then we have, um, similar to the previous case, we have three recursion cases. And the first one is when the next word is epsilon. And in this case, you can see the summary loss doesn't change. We have L on the right-hand side, and also L on the left-hand side, because just, just a reminder, adding epsilon into the summary doesn't increase the summary loss because epsilon will be removed later. And this is shown as a yellow transition uh, line in this uh, big table. So let me first introduce the table. So the summaries in the same row are all in the same long spark case. For example, in the second row, all the summaries are in the long spark case one to five. And in the third row, it's, recall, it's recording all summaries in the long spark case between six to 10. And in the first column, we're saying we only consider the first model output. And in the second column, we're saying like we consider the first two model outputs. And you may also notice in every table cell, we actually have two components, not only the summary. So the first component is the summary, like a partial summary. Um, and the second component is the corresponding log probability of this partial summary. So let me give a concrete example here. So in this case, we're considering when the next word is epsilon. Um, we could translate from the first row, first column, epsilon minus 0 0.3 to epsilon, epsilon minus 0 0.5. And this is uh, calculated by C. We have two epsilon here. Uh, so we have a drawn summary of two epsilon. And the log probability of this partial summary is calculated by summing the log probability of this partial summary with the log probability of this new word. So uh, this means this new word is epsilon with the corresponding log probability of minus 0 0.2. And that's basically the first case when the next word is epsilon. And second case is when we have a repetition. That is when the next word repeats the prediction at the previous time, at the previous time. And in this case, we can see the summary lines also doesn't change. We have L on the both sides of the, sorry, L on the both sides of this equation. And we also mark this as a yellow transition line. So for example, here we have a factory has, and we repeatedly generated another token has, then we still end up with factory has because we're merging the two has here. But with the corresponding, different log probability because we are summing the log probability of the previous partial summary with this newly predicted token. The third case is different because it's a, we have a much longer mass equation here. So let me explain. So in this case, we are considering all possible combinations between the previous summary, like previous, previously predicted partial summary and all words in the vocabulary, such that the combination of the partial summary and the newly predicted token can fill in a specific loss market. For example, if we have the previous summary to be US and the newly predicted token to be maker, then we found their drawn summary lines is in the six to 10. And that's why we have US maker here. Or we could see if we consider faculty and has. So faculty has a loss between six and 10. And after adding the has, its loss is between 11 to, uh, sorry, 11 to 15. So similarly, uh, the DSL3 here is just considering all possible combination between the previously predicted summary and the new token in the dictionary, such as the joint 
losses within a specific loss bracket, say 11 to 15. And now we have the candidate summary for all these three recursion cases. Then everything is simple. We can just keep the most probable one into DSL because our DSL is supposed to keep the most probable summary um, whose allowance is within the alpha long spark it, given the first S model outputs. You can see in the equation here, we're taking the argument max over all the candidate summaries and um, we're maximizing the right the, the value of the summary here and then we keep the most probable one into DSL. Because of the merging operation, this character level launch control version is also may also be in effect. So we show uh, we proved another theorem showing that when we set the launch spark to be one and we are not merging repetitions, then this launch control algorithm is exact. But if we are merging repetitions or the launch spark is not equal to one, then this dynamic programming algorithm may be approximate. And as, some, as I promised before, uh, we have some empirical analysis of this long spark kit to show whether this, bunker, this long spark kit is indeed effective, uh, effective or not. In this diagram, we show two different things. One is the inference time, which is shown in this blue curve here. The other one is the root score, which is shown in this orange curve here. So the root score is basically, um, as I mentioned, is the mean evaluation metric of the summarization system. So it's measuring how good is the is the output summary. So as you can see, when we increase the size of the long spark rate from one to some small value, then we have a large decrease in the inference time. But on the same time, we're having very little de a decrease in the root scores. So that means is we're largely improving inference efficiency while not sacrificing too much on the quality of the predicted summary. So that's the purpose of our long spark kit, um, which is improve inference efficiency. Um, so in sum, this diagram is verifying the effectiveness of our long spark kit component. So now I finished the introducing of all the approaches. I will move to the experimental performance of our methods on benchmark data sets. So actually in the experimental setting, we consider in the experiment part, we consider two different settings. And the first one is when there's no loss budget. See the summarization models can generate whatever loss it wants. And we don't impose any loss budget to these summarization models. And the second one is when we have word level long spark case, sorry, long In this case, we're controlling the number of words in a summary. And third one is character level long spark case, long spark case, sorry, long spark case. And that's when we're considering, we're constraining the number of characters in the summary. So let's first consider the first setting when there's no long uh, budget. As you can see, our approach is having the best performance comparing to all previous methods in this setting in terms of the delta root score. So delta root score is like a, the total root score comparing to some previous baseline. And moreover, our method is very efficient. Um, recall that our method is learning from a search-based teacher, which is not efficient at the inference time. Our approach is roughly around 2,000 times faster than the search-based method. And oh, just a reminder here, um, our model is not using any loss control algorithm for this no loss party setting because we don't have to control loss in this setting. And this is the performance on the Gigabar data set, which is a benchmark data set for sentence summarization. 
We also should perform this on another data set called Dr. Sun 4, which is also a benchmark data set for sentence summarization. And notice this data set is a test only data set. So it doesn't contain any training or validation uh, data. And our model is learning from the GigaWord, is trained on the GigaWord data set, and then uh, being transferred to this Dr. Sun 4 data set. As you can see, our model, uh, sorry, I think I'm moving to the wrong slides. So as you can see, our model is still having the best performance on this Dr. Sun 4 data set. And this demonstrate the transferability of our approach. Uh, so uh, I think I mentioned, I said that our model is trained on the GigaWord data set and then being transferred to the Dr. Sun 4 data set. But uh, what I actually mean is we're trained on the search summaries of this GigaWord data set and then being transferred to the Dr. Sun 4 data set. And that's why our method is as surprised. And now we move to the word level lungs, but, uh, lungs budgets. And our model is named as NOS here in the US. So we consider two variables of our model here. One is truncating and one is loss control. Truncating means is we're using, we're not using any loss controlism. We're asking the model to generate the summary and then we truncate the model output to fit in a specific loss bucket, budget. So here we have a loss budget of eight words and here we have a loss budget of 10 words. But with loss control means is we're using the loss, loss controlism and the, using after algorithm to predict the summary of eight words or 10 words. So in this table, our approach, even with truncating, can all perform all previous methods. And after having the loss control, the performance of our approach is further improved. And that's because if you truncate the summary, the summary is not complete and you're abandoning some information in, in the summary. But when we do the loss control, we are we can make the summary complete while still fitting in the loss budget. And that's why after we're having the loss control, the performance is further improved for both of the settings here. And the result is consistent on the Dr. Sun 4 data set, showing the effectiveness of our loss control algorithm. Um, as I mentioned before, we um, we have some analysis showing that uh, comparing our encoder-only architecture with the encoder-decoder models. I've shown in this table, our encoder-only model is actually having a better performance than the encoder-decoder model. And this is verifying the initial hypothesis I made at the beginning of the presentation. We also show that model trained by connection is temporal classification, CDC algorithm, can have a better performance than vanilla trained, that is, you just vanilla train the model by cross entropy loss. I think I'm running out of time. Let me skip something. Um, our, our model can also perform loss transfer generation. And that is generating summaries of different number of words than the training target. And that is, for example, you train the model on, a word, on the 10 word summary, and then you ask the model to generate a word summary, or you train the model to generate on the a word summary, and then you ask the model to generate 10 word summary. And our model having better performance in the long to short setting in this um, than the previous, than a previous non progressive model. Well, our model can do the short to long generation, while the previous approach cannot. Uh, so the performance in the character level is similar to the word level. Our approach can outperform all previous methods. And with the loss control, we can achieve a better performance. So let me escape this. We also compare our approach with the autoregressive transformer. So usually, the autoregressive model have a worse performance than the autoregressive model. But here we're showing that our autoregressive model is actually outperforming the autoregressive transformer, which is a strong, strong result. We also, we also show that our loss control version is not applicable to this autoregressive transformer. As you can see, after you having in, incorporating loss control with the transformer, 
is having worse performance than naive truncating. And that's because our loss control is assuming the upper probability at different slots are local and independent. Well, autoregressive model predict one token at, at a time, and every prediction is depending on, depending on all previous predictions. And that's why our loss control algorithm is not compatible with this autoregressive transformer. And okay, this is a similar to loss control generation. Uh, so in conclusion, our approach has, uh, we first perform unsurprise search, and then we train an autoregressive model from the search results. And finally, we have some loss control algorithms on the top of an autoregressive model, which can control the summary loss in either word level or character level. Our model is not, can not only generate summary of high quality, but it's very efficient. And we can also do the lungs, tra lungs transfer generation, and that is generating summaries of different lungs than the training target. So in the future, we are planning to investigate a supervised setting, but it probably requires some earnest revisit of the output lungs of previous models, because as I mentioned before, if the summary lengths of the model are different, it's not fair to compare these summarization models. Um, but most of the previous method doesn't control output lengths very well. So to compare with them, we probably need an earnest revisit of their output lengths. And thank you for listening. That's the end of our presentation. Uh, any questions? Oh, great. Thanks for the... Thanks for the... We have uh, uh, people in the meeting room. And uh, the talk started late, but I guess we still have a few minutes for quick questions. Uh, can I have a question, please? Um, um, Kuyan, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, so in your experiment section, you mentioned that uh, um, previous methods cannot um, generate, cannot do length transfer from short sentences to long sentences. Um, could you yeah. please brief, uh, brief mention what, what, why that's the case and your algorithm can do that? Uh, sorry, I think you're mentioning uh, this word fine. Right, right. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay. One second. Right, so you're, you're mentioning these slides, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, right. I, I think the the previous model was trained to train on the. So this previous model is actually uh, a bird model with some, uh, and it's having some other uh, structure inference after having the bird opus. Uh, I think there. <laughs> It's basically they're, they're not designed to do the short to long generation and they're simply not capable to do that. Um, I, I didn't look into their very details of their approach. But in my case, because as I mentioned before, it's a demo program table and we can specify the summary lines. Like uh, the one I mentioned here, you can specify the summary lines. So if you want longer summaries, you can just start in more rows and operating the algorithm and then you can get longer summaries. So I think the reason why they can't and we can is just the, the design different, we're using different approach. And that's why we have different outcome. Yeah, so I think for long to short, you can probably just truncate, but then for short to long, then maybe the end of, end of sentence token is already generated, so you can't do anything about it. I think maybe okay, doing so yeah. it hasn't started, so I guess I can still comment. What I remember is they did a length penalty. So when you do a penalty, you can only be sure that you can't penalize something and it becomes bigger and bigger, like longer and longer. So that's why I guess they can generate longer text. I see. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a quick okay. question. Yeah. Uh, I, I find that the, the, the motivations like for the search-based uh, Paris works, uh, they have several drawbacks. One of that is like the, the, the slow search, right? So we, search, we, we have the training data first, 
by search and then train like the memory database used in neural network. So that makes sense to me. But for the second one, the second drawbacks of the search based process is like they only extract original words and preserve the original order. So I'm quite interested uh, about like how your method can like not only extract original word and not preserve original order. So so that's the drawback you mentioned in your paper. So I just want, I cannot find like the, the point to like you address the concerns. So so I, I ask this question. Thank you. Sure. So that's a great question. So right in the previous search based matter, because you're uh, required the matter to extracting some tokens from the soft text. So the matter is purely extractive. So every token in the summary must be appearing in the soft text. But in our case, when you train the model, um, when you train a machine learning model from a search result, you're somehow trying to find a common pattern of this search output. So you are trying to see what's a good summary after observing all these search summaries. So in that case, we're considering uh, in, 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 this, in machine learning model, when we generate a summary, we're considering all words in the vocabulary. So that makes it possible to generate tokens uh, that are not from the soft text. So we, we did some case study and we found that uh, for some word, it's replacing the, the word from soft text with some similar word when it's generating the summaries. I remember replacing the historical with some uh, some some were similar to the historical uh, in the case study of my paper. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, given the time, I mean, I guess we conclude here for this seminar presentation. Thanks again for the. Thank you for the questions.